This special meeting of the Wichita Board of Education is called to order. I'd like to welcome everyone. The Wichita Public Schools will be the district of choice in our region where all students and staff are empowered to dream, believe, and achieve. This is a business meeting of the Board of Education. We request that you observe the board's expect expectations of civility. I ask you to restrain from ap applauding except during good news items. Also, please refrain from talking with others in the lecture hall and, and, and please mute electronic devices. If, uh, uh, and then I'm, I'd like to just welcome you again and thank you for coming. And if you would now join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Dr. Mike, first item. The statement about the COVID-19 meeting format. My name is Mike Willamy, clerk of the board. This special BOE meeting at the, of the Wichita Public Schools is taking place at the North High Lecture Hall, 1437 Rochester in Wichita. Due to Governor Laura Kelly's state of disaster emergency declarations concerning the COVID-19 pandemic, and pursuant to authority granted under Kansas Administrative Regulation 16-20-01, as well as the Board of Education's concern for the health and safety of the public, except as described in the BOE agenda under public communications, the public will not attend this meeting. This meeting is available to be viewed live by the public in the following ways. WPS-TV on Cox Cable Channel 20, the district's website at www.usd259.org forward slash WPS TV online and live stream apps for phone, Roku, and Apple TV by searching WPS hyphen TV. After today's meeting, a recording of the meeting will be available on Cox Cable Channel 20 and the WPS YouTube channel. The agenda for this meeting was published on March 1st, 2021 at www.usd259.org forward slash BOE under BOE meetings, agendas, and minutes. The news media also received the main agenda and a portfolio containing the appendices. At this meeting, all board members, district staff, and presenters will identify themselves by name and position before they speak to assist the public in following the meeting. At special BOE meetings, public comment is allowed only during public communications on topics that pertain to agenda items. If any person is registered, the speaker will be called into the lecture hall to address the board at the podium. After addressing the board, the speaker will be allowed to leave the, will be required to leave the North High Lecture Hall and the school. Board meetings have been reopened for public communications Thus, the practice of accepting email public comment has been discontinued. Email, emails may still be sent to the board members at their email addresses, which are available at www.usd259.org forward slash BOE under BOE contact information and profiles. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mike. We're slowly moving back to normal, and we appreciate that. So it's good to have the public comment section back, and I'm sure soon we'll, you'll see uh, these meetings conducted in a more normal way here in the very near future. Uh, next item, please. Under reports, Service Employees International. Next item. Reports, United Teachers of Wichita. Welcome, Kim. Hello, I'm um, Kimberly Howard, president of United Teachers of Wichita. Um, since this is a special meeting, I'm gonna keep it really brief tonight and just wanted to bring a couple positives um, to share with you tonight. So first, I wanna thank and recognize Kimber Cassetts and our school nurses for their time and planning to get our staff vaccinated. 
Um, I myself went through that process, and it was very quick, very efficient, um, and I know that took a lot of um, planning um, from her and her team, so I just want to recognize their hard work tonight. Um, the other thing is I just wanted to welcome our um, applicants for the District 5 position. Um, being a BOE member, especially during a pandemic, is not for the faint of heart, as you all know. <laughs> Um, so we hope that the, the new BOE member, you know, will ask questions in meetings for clarification on issues and seek input from staff um, when making decisions. So thank you. Thank you, Kim. Next item, please. Under public communications, no one registered to speak tonight. Next item, please. Consent. I will start with uh, Julie. Julie, do you have any consent items to pull? No consent items to pull. This is Julie Hedrick, District 2. Cheryl? Cheryl Logan, at large, I have nothing to pull tonight. Ron? Ron Marsalis, District 6, I have nothing. Stan Reeser, District 4, no consent items to pull. Ben? Ben Blankley, District 1, no consent items to pull. And Ernestine? Ernestine Cravel, District 3, no consent items to pull. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda. Julie Hedrick, District 2, so moved to accept the consent agenda. Cheryl Logan, second. It's been moved and seconded. And Mike, did you get the persons that? Yes. Okay. Uh, we are going, we're trying to keep it simple tonight. So we're gonna vote by hand. Um, or would you prefer us to just go around the table and say our, say our name and district and then say probably, yay or nay? Probably to say your name and, and your vote, please. Okay. We will start with Ernestine then. Ernestine Crable, District 3, yes. Ben Blankley, District 1, yes. Stan Reeser, District 4, yes. Ron Rosales, District 6, yes. Cheryl Logan at large, yes. Julie Hedrick, District 2, yes. Consent agenda passes 6-0. Dr. Mike, next item, please. Under operations, Board of Education interviews, BOE District 5 vacancy. At the regular Board of Education meeting on February 8, 2021, Board member Mike Rohde resigned his position on the Board of Education. At that meeting, the board approved the publication of a legal notice in the Wichita Eagle regarding the vacancy. The board also approved an application and interview process. The legal notice was published on February 11th and it provided interested persons until noon on February 24th to submit completed applications and letters of reference. An application form, BOE District 5 map, and other information were available on the BOE section of the district website from February 9th until noon on February 24th. Tonight, the board will interview all qualified applicants. The interview process. Applicants will be interviewed in the order applications were received. The board will interview one applicant at a time. The other applicants will wait in the North High Library. Applicant interview topics will include diversity, superintendent relations, community relations, board relations, the district's mission statement and strategic plan, and the district's budget. Each board member will ask one question from the interview topics above. The applicant will have up to two minutes to respond to each question. A timer on the lecture hall's projection screens will show the time remaining. There will be no follow-up questions. At the end of each interview, the applicant will have the opportunity to ask one question to the board president and to make a closing statement that lasts no longer than 60 seconds. Applicants who have completed their interviews may remain in the room if they so desire. President Reeser. At this time, we'll ask the, all the applicants to proceed to the library, except for Mia Turner. And uh, Mia will go first. And I have to echo what I think everyone has said tonight and what Kim just said in her statement. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to do this process. And while Mia is moving down, I'll just tell the board members that uh, what we'll do is we'll mix this up a little bit. Um, we'll, I'll just rotate who goes first on the first questions, and then the next applicant will go the opposite direction, if that's okay.
and uh, Dr. Mike, um, where is the timer very easy for uh, Mia to see? I forget exactly where it's going to be at. Yes, it is. Oh, I see it. It's right up there. Okay. Do you see it, Mia? I do. Okay, excellent. I won't need it. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you coming tonight, and we look forward to this interview, and we'll go straight to it with the questions. And I'm going to start with Julie Hedrick on her question about superintendent relations. Go ahead, Julie. Good evening, Mia. Hello. Thank you for coming. We're glad to have you here. My question is, one of the most important roles of the Board of Education is to evaluate our district's superintendent. What do you look for in a great superintendent? I think that a great superintendent uh, needs to be aware of um, their role. It, the role needs to be clarified, um, the expectations um, for the district and for the superintendent needs to be clarified as well. There has to be uh, open, honest, and regular communication and um, ideas need to be shared and I think that it takes someone with uh, an innovative mind, a progressive way of thinking um, to move the district or move the children, our children, um, ahead of the game. Make them ready for life. To give them the appropriate education and the skills that they need to be productive in our society. Thank you. And uh, Cheryl, go ahead. Yes. Uh, I'm asking the question on mission statement and strategic plan. How do you envision your role as in assuring that the district's strategic plan goals are used to extens extensively guide and us to accomplish the district's mission? I think um, my role would be to make sure that we have a policy in place that um, gives the, the students, our children, um, every opportunity to learn everything that they need to know in order to, um, to do well in life, not just learn a skill, a, a um, job training skill, but also uh, emotional well-being, how to handle their emotions, how to deal with their money properly, how to interact um, just in the world that they're going to be thrust into when they become adults. And I think it's important that uh, for me, if I were to get this position, it would be important for me to understand what tools I can use and what partnerships I can create in order to help our students. Thank you very much. Ron? Ron Rosales, District 6. Hello, Mia, how you doing? I'm good. Good, good. Uh, my question will be over community relations. I am big on community relations. I am, I'm going to ask. I'm the sorry. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was getting ready yeah, to go. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You're ready. Um, would you please provide an example of how you have imp impacted community relations through your past or present employer and how that experience would be relevant to the school district and your potential role as BOE member? Well, with, the, uh, with my job, I, um, I am an administrative assistant for a great um, employer. Uh, she's very um, loving and caring, and she's always thinking of others. And so what we always try to do with this COVID, we try to find ways that we can help those who may not have the resources that they need, that they need as far as um, PPE and uh, masks and uh, sanit sanitizing lotions things like that, even um, offering, creating food baskets for um, the, com the community that we live in and the communities that we serve. And so I think um, being able to get to the people that need the help the most, not wait for uh, anyone to ask, to see a need and to serve it proactively. I think that that's important to stay aware of what is needed who's in need and how to get those resources uh, to them uh, in a timely fashion. All right, thank you. Stan Reeser, District 4. Mia, the next question is about budget. 
Uh, setting budget priorities is one of our primary uh, responsibilities. How would you work with all stakeholders to determine budget uh, priorities? Well, I would think that you would have to first know what um, stakeholders' expectations are. And then you'd have to understand what, we, what resources that we have to work with. Um, then we'd have to prioritize what's at stake and, um, and try to fulfill what's needed and then what we'd also like to have our, our wants. Um, it's, a, it's going to be a, a tough balance to, to get everything everyone wants, but I think understanding what's wanted, understanding what we have, and then prioritizing, prioritizing the needs would be the proper course. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mia. Um, my name is Ben Blankley, District 1. Um, my question is about diversity. What local initiatives or activities have you been involved in for diversity, equity, and inclusion? Explain your personal involvement. Um, well, I, um, again, I, I work for the, I'm not sure if I can say who I work for. Okay. I work for the police department. And um, our, our goal is to make our police department look like our community. So we had to uh, find out the numbers, how many African Americans we have, how many females we have in the city, how many uh, other minorities, and then we try to target uh, um, our recruiting towards the groups that are often overlooked, um, that are not usually targeted, explain to them why it would be great to be a police officer, to be on the police force, to help our community. Um, I think you have to be mindful and purposeful, intentional in what it is that you're trying to do and recognize that we're not just one group, we are diverse, we all have different ideals, we all have different perspectives, and then if we can tap into that, that will open up different ways of uh, bringing in uh, creativity, bringing in um, different tools that we need, different ways of handling situations. And so, uh, and I also do that in our church. Um, I think it's important that you can't just have a black church or a white church or I think it's all about bringing in those who are in need, those who are needed. And we have to do that with our community as well. Bring in those who are overlooked, get their ideas, get their perspectives, use their, their, uh, their ideas and, and integrate it all so we can be a better community. Go ahead, Ernestine. I'm Ernestine Crable from District 3. And my questions is about relationship with others on this board or the board as a whole, individuals. Um, how would you go about establishing and maintaining good relationships with the board and your fellow members? And if you could give an example of when you've worked with a, a group such as a board. Um, well, I um, was recently uh, asked to sit on an interview panel for the bomb squad. I have no idea what it is exactly that they do. So what I had to do was learn from the people who are sitting on the panel what their expectations are, um, explain to them what I expect and what, um, and, and ask questions. What is it that I'm needed to do? What, is, what am I looking for? Um, what skills do I need to properly um, make sound decisions and um, and just be open to construction, constructive criticism, ideas, uh, advice, suggestions, and then be honest and open if I'm not understanding something to ask questions and get clarification. I think communication and, and all that we do is the most important key. Communication and honesty. If I don't understand something, I have no problem saying, can I, it's asking for help. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Turner. Uh, you have a minute to either make a closing statement or you can ask us a question or a combo or combination of those. Okay, well, I just, um, I just wanna say, I have absolutely 
no idea exactly how this worked, but I had children to attend. Uh, I had I put six children through uh, WPS, and so I know how great it can be. I know where there could be some improvements, and so I, I look forward to hearing one way or the other. Um, even if I don't uh, get the position, I, I will still work with uh, WPS in some way. And um, the only question that I have is if I do, is there some type of training available so that I can understand what it is that, that's needed or required of me. Yes, and I think I'll ask the superintendent if she would be willing to uh, stand fairly close to the podium uh, to help answer these questions. But there definitely is some training that we provide. And there's also, we are part of the Kansas Association of School Boards, and they also have a lot of good training programs. Okay. Um, and if Dr. Thompson wants to expand on that answer. Yes, absolutely. Good afternoon. Hello. One of the things that we do when we first onboard um, superintendents in the Wichita Public Schools is we actually have an onboarding session um, where we have all the members of the cabinet that represent all of the divisions within the organization. Mm -hmm. And they come and they share kind of some of what their role is how this department sits and where it fits and what it does for the children in the, in the Wichita Public Schools. So that's one opportunity for our, you to learn and kind of what happens within our school district. But then there are other opportunities. We are members of many different organizations that help support the school districts where we get ideas and network with. One is the Council of Great City Schools. And then there is another uh, group called the National um, Alliance of school board association. So there's another group that you all are a part of that you go out every year and you can get training from there. And then there's one at the state level as well, um, the Kansas Association of School Boards, and they have opportunities all year long. So you can pick all kinds of different things. All these topics they're asking you all about, there's a workshop somewhere <laughs> about okay. those things, anywhere you wanna go. And so those are, there's tons of opportunities to learn about your role, and really the main thing is just, are you willing to serve kids? Because that's the main thing, and if you have that at heart, all the other things you can be able to learn. Okay, great, thank right. you. Thank you, Mrs. Mia Turner. We really appreciate your taking the time to apply, and uh, we will vote uh, Monday. Great, thank you all so much for your time, and, and uh, look forward to hearing from you one way or the other. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. Welcome. thank you. Thank you. And we will take about a one minute, um, just, I think we, we're gonna stay live, aren't we, Dr. Mike? We just need a minute to transition the speakers. Hello. Hello. This is Christina Nooch. Yes. And did I say your last name correctly? Yes, you did. Oh, excellent. We're going to jump right into the questions, if that's okay with you. Yeah, let's go. And uh, each board member will identify themselves and uh, ask you a question. And you have a one-minute uh, time, and it'll be up in the corner of that screen. Two minutes. And I thought it was two minutes. Yeah. Two oh, two. Minutes? Thank you. <laughs> Thank we you. don't want to rush it. <laughs> See, uh, that you pay attention to detail better than I do, so you're great. I'm detail-oriented. <laughs> Ernest, Ernestine, if you want to start. Okay. I'm Ernestine Crable from District 3. 
how will you go about establishing and maintaining good relationship with the board, the other board members, and, and your fellow board members individually and as a group? And can you tell an example of how that you've worked well with another in a board or other kind of group type leadership? Sure. Um, okay, so experience. Um, I am, I used to work for 259. Um, I'm a former teacher. Um, I was asked to be on a leadership team um, for one of my elementary schools. And so I have experience working with the leadership team. I also um, was asked to be a part of um, the Marzano training um, team for the district and for my building. And so again, I have experience with um, being trusted with leadership and trusted with working with groups of people. Um, of course, respect is always very, very important. Um, we're obviously not always gonna agree on everything, on every topic, and I highly, I find it very important that everyone gets, you know, gets their voice, gets to ask their questions, and is respected in that. And we're always, I think it's okay to agree to disagree. Once we have our vote, we're all gonna have to agree on that, you know, a majority rule. So, um, yeah. And of course, um, with creating that community within each other, I don't know what you guys already do. If you guys plan like lunch, well, probably not luncheons with COVID, but if you guys talk personally already, you know, I, I hope to just jump right in and be a part of the group. So. I throw darts at most. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy darts. <laughs> Good. Um, mm -hmm. Christina, I'm yes. Ben Blankley, District One. Um, my topic is diversity. Yes. What local initiatives or activities have you been involved in for diversity, equity, and inclusion? Explain your personal involvement. Okay, my personal involvement. Um, Mentally, I'm very involved. I, I have not gone to any local events or anything, I would say, but um, I, how do I say this? I am, I highly value diversity. I come from, I, I didn't grow up in Wichita. I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, um, which is also another very large school district. and. I went through all of my schools um, thinking it was normal to have a very diverse school. I was used to not always being in the majority. Um, I highly valued that. And I remember writing my senior paper in high school about that was like the number one thing I was thankful for from um, my school experience. And it was actually a pretty big culture shock when I went to school at K-State that it wasn't like that. <laughs> um, when my husband and I moved here to, to Wichita, um, it was vital for me, to for my kids, even though I didn't even have kids yet, um, to be in the school district because I wanted them to have the same experience. Um, <clears throat> I wanted them to be in a school district that was diverse. And so when we were house hunting, I told the realtor that I had to have a house that was in 259 boundaries, just because I feel very strongly about that. Um, I may not be a person out there holding a poster, you know, at rallies, um, but I'm involved. I pay attention. I know what's going on in the news. Um, and I try to uphold some good values for my own children and, you know, be, um, yeah, um, and be a good leader for the community as much as I can by being respectful for everybody. So does that answer your question? I think so. Yeah, okay. thank you. Yeah. Christina, I'm Stan Reeser. Uh, I represent District 4. And my question is on the area of budgets. As you know, uh, setting our, our budget is one of our primary responsibilities. Mm -hmm. How would you work with all stakeholders to determine our budget priorities? So budget priorities, um, personally, um, I think that the school district should be, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, oh, that didn't work. <laughs> I press the button. Um, I think that, that um, the school district should be financially responsible with their budget. Um, on a personal level, I 
um, learned at a very young age to be personally responsible for my own, to hold a budget. My dad taught me at the age of 16 how to do all of those things and taught me to never carry debt. And so I, I can say at my age, you know, nearly 40, I have never carried debt or paid interest other than my house and my car. And so I, I see those ideals and I would think that that's how, um, even though I don't have professional experience with a large budget like this, you know, I, I understand the importance of balancing a budget and I do that with my family and my household. So, Thank and, you it, very and if oh. I don't know about, because this is not something I have professional experience with. So when I don't know something, I am, I am a true researcher at heart. I, I'm an educator. So I look that stuff up, I research. If I don't know something, I wanna become the expert on it. So <clears throat> I will try to, you know, be the best that I can be to help with that, to be a part of those decisions and, and actually be educated on it. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. Ron? Hi, Christina. Uh, my question is on community relations. Yes. Would you please provide an example of how you have impacted community relations through your past or present employer and how that experience would be relevant to the school district as a potential board member? Sure. Well, I, I'm a former 259 teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I worked for the district for 10 years and I, I taught kindergarten at Mueller Elementary and I taught first grade at Kelly Elementary. Um, it's, I, of course, I completely understand the importance of involving your community and having that impact. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I helped with family engagement nights and, um, and making sure that I'm sorry. it's okay. <laughs> sorry about that. That's okay. Um, what was I saying? Oh, um, when I was, okay, so when I was previously working for the district, um, you know, I always had good relationships with the parents um, of the students in my class. And I felt like it was very common that if a parent had something that they wanted to share with me, they felt comfortable sharing that with me. And I was always good about advocating for um, parents and students um, at the building level. Um, even at the staff level, people would come to me and ask right. me, you know, to help advocate for things. Um, I, I just feel like I have a true heart for that. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Right. Okay, you're almost done. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing <laughs> We haven't bit yet, have we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cheryl Logan. I'm the at-large position. Hi, Cheryl. And I'm going to be asking you about the, the mission and the strategic plan. Sure. Uh, how do you envision your role in assuming that the dis in assuring that the district's strategic plan goals are used extensively to guide us to accomplish the district's mission. Could you repeat the first part? Yeah. How do you envision your role in assuring the district's strategic plan goals are used okay. extensively to guide us to accomplish the district's mission? Um, okay, when I was reviewing the the strategic plan um i thought it makes complete sense i agreed with everything that was on there um i think about why have a strategic plan will the community um when they're looking at the at the district what is the number one thing that they are hoping coming is coming from our district is that obviously that the kids are learning and being successful and I think the number one thing on your strategic plan um, or one of the goals was to increase graduation rate. And I mean, of course, that makes absolute sense. Um, so I would always be advocating for things that lead towards that. Um, I also was really happy to see that one of the themes on there was uh, appreciating or, or ha keeping in mind the whole child. I'm a huge proponent for mental health, and um, I, I feel, I know that there's a lot that the district has already done to include mental health awareness um, 
for staff and kids, but I, I feel like there's always more room for that. And so I feel like I would always have a special eye and a heart for that to continue to advocate for putting, you know, helping that in with policies or, or whatnot um, if I was on the board. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name's Julie Hedrick. I'm with District 2. And my question is regarding superintendent relations. And one of the most important roles of the Board of Education is to evaluate our district superintendent. So what do you look for in a great superintendent? I look for transparency. Um, I look for communication. Um, with my previous administrators that I've worked with, you know, I've seen buildings run amazingly when the person who is the head administrator, you know, trusts their staff and has open communication. And so I think that that is the most important. I, I'm hoping that you guys already have, you know, um, the availability to have that open communication um, with Dr. Thompson and, um, and that she shares, you know, updates with you guys on a regular basis. I, I think that would be really important, you know, to hear what's going on in the district all the time, weekly or whatever she does for updates. Um, I also believe that there should be a mutual respect and the okay to be able to ask the challenging questions. I think sometimes there is a perception um, from the community that the district or, or Dr. Thompson will come with a plan and the perception is, is maybe you know, it's already been decided upon before you guys even are presented that. And I know that that was actually a couple of leaks that happened previously this year with that. And so this, there was a little bit of a lack of trust with that. And so I think I would, I, I personally would just want to make sure that we are being careful and, you know, going in the order that we're supposed to, that, you know, um, they, they find the problem, they come up with the plan, they present it to us we discuss it openly, you know, and make a decision. Um, but I, I hope it's okay to, to have that challenging um, banter, or not really banter, but just have those, being, it's okay to have those discussions and um, d agree to disagree sometimes. Thank you. Respectfully, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, and I, now you have a minute, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have a minute to uh, either make a statement, uh, give us more information about yourself if you want, or you can uh, ask us a question, or you can do a combo. Okay. I'll share, I'll share a little bit about myself. Um, so I am a current stay-at-home mom to three boys. I have a 10-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 3-year-old. They are all involved with Wichita Public Schools. My oldest is a fifth grader, so about to be middle school. Um, my middle is second grade. And my youngest, while he's not in school, he receives services from parents as teachers, which I absolutely love that program. And I cannot say more than more great things about it. Um, and I, like I said before, I'm a former teacher at the district. I left because I wanted to stay home with my youngest baby boy. and. Um, he's still not in school, so I'm still home. But my heart is still always paying attention to education. I found that I left the building, but I still watch the board meetings. <laughs> you know, I find board meetings fun and interesting. And, yeah, you know, I'm one of those people. <laughs> and that's my time. <laughs> Darn it. Well, you did wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. Christina uh, Nooch, we will uh, decide and vote on Monday, and we appreciate you taking the time to go through this process, and, and uh, we look forward to uh, working with you in, in the future. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. With your decision. <laughs> Yeah, thank, thank you. you.
Is everyone set? Okay, our next applicant is Kathleen Bond. Welcome. Thank you. And we're going to jump straight into questions. All right. And uh, this time we will start with Ron. Hello, Kathleen. Hello. Uh, my name is Ron Rosales. I'm the representative for 6th District. And my question is dealing with community relations. Would you please provide an example of how you have impacted the community or community relations through your past or present employer and how that experience would be relevant to the school district and your potential um, board membership? I'm glad you asked me that, thank you. I'm a substitute school teacher in the district and there was a time that I substituted at Colvin in, no, in a November. Being an honorary commander at McConnell Air Force Base, I have a passion for our military. So I asked the kids, I said, we're gonna make Thanksgiving Day cards for a unit that has been deployed overseas. And I get to put those letters on an airplane from McConnell to fly over there. So the kids were really excited about that. And we did the letters and the cards and they were sent. Well, I subbed for that same class the following January when that unit had come back. I scheduled it with the principal and I had the military people come in and talk to the kids where the kids could meet those a gentleman and that one lady that they wrote the letters to and there was hands on with, um, with the colonels and the pilots flying the KC-135 and those students were the quietest and the most attentive. So I impacted the community of the school at that time and they went home and told their parents and I also impacted McConnell. Um, as they enjoy coming out into the community, whether it be with the schools or whether it be with local neighborhoods or any kind of a fundraiser or a drive. I hope that answers your question, Ron. Yes, yes thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Stan Reeser. I represent District 4. My question is going to be in the area of budget. As you know, one of our biggest uh, jobs is to create the school district budget. And my question is, how would you work with all stakeholders in setting and determining budget priorities? That was actually my question to you at the end of my interview. Um, <laughs> so, since I had the question, I don't have an answer for that. So may I ask you that? Yes. <laughs> or, or, or we can reserve that and, uh, for your uh, closing statement. Okay. If that's okay. That's okay. That's fine. And Ben? Yep. Um, my name is Ben Blankley. I'm the District 1 representative on the school board. Um, my question is about diversity. What local initiatives or activities have you been involved in for diversity, equity, and inclusion? Explain your personal involvement. Wow. Um, serving on the board of the Metropolitan Ballet here in Wichita, as well as the Daughters of the American Revolution on the executive board, I come in contact with a lot of diversity. Because we're in the community a lot, we're serving a lot of different people. And I, first of all, I just want to tell you that um, people are people. And that includes our students, our staff, and our teachers. And I think that it is incredible with the guidelines that you have proposed and you have implemented into the policies for that diversity in our schools. It is so important that everyone is treated fairly, that everyone is treated with integrity, and that they have value and worth. And so, I mean, I just wanted to give you an add a girl or an add a boy if that's allowed. <laughs> so, but yes, I think diversity is something that we need to continually work on, especially in the climate of society today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Am I up next? Yes, I'm sorry. Ernestine. Ernestine Cravel. Hi, Hello. Ernestine. District 3. I'm asking you a question about board relations. How will you go about establishing and maintaining good board re relations with your fellow board members and with the board as a whole? And can you? Well, it says blue. Put it closer to me, okay, <laughs> got that, okay. How will you go about establishing and maintaining good relationship with the board as a whole and with fellow board members? And can you give an example of when you've worked on a board that shows that you know about how to do that? 
Thank you, Ernestine. First of all, I love people. It is not hard for me to get to know you individually as well as collectively as a group of people. Uh, that is your first part of your question, and take you to lunch if that helps too. Um, I, in the community, I am very involved in the community, and serving on the DAR, um, we're in, in the community a lot, and I totally forgot your question. I am totally went blank. I'm so sorry. Could you please repeat that? Well, it's just how do you get along with other board members and how do you free see yourself as cooperating or getting along with Well, the, the first of thing you have to do is listen. Uh, listening is so important and so crucial because everybody has a perspective and that's a big think tank is what the board, that's how I see the Board of Education as a think tank. With all of your different ideas and perspectives, you've got to listen. And there's so many times that people just don't listen and you, you hit you hit a clog and you can't get anything done. I think that you need to respect, you need to respect what someone says, whether or not you believe or agree with them. We're not always gonna agree, but we don't have to be ugly about it. We can agree to disagree, come to a medium, come to the center and say, what can we do to work with it? Negotiation is so important with your fellow board members. And um, on the executive board at the DAR that I serve with my local chapter, there's a lot of times that we don't agree. And we laugh about it. We don't fight. There's, if you fight, there's not going to be any, any success at all with what you're wanting to strive for. Julie? Hi, Kathy. Hi, Julie. Um, I'm from uh, District 2, and my question is regarding superintendent relations. And one of the most important roles of the Board of Education is to evaluate the district's superintendent. So what do you look for in a great superintendent? I look for leadership. I look for honesty. I look for integrity. I look for good ideas. Um, I don't find that I would look for somebody who is um, closed-minded. I would not look for somebody who thinks that they know it all. So somebody who is teachable, willing to listen to others' um, opinions as well as perspectives, that is what I would look for in a superintendent and somebody who's very friendly and, and approachable. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'm Cheryl Logan. I'm the at-large position, and I'm asking about the mission and the strategic plan. Um, how do you envision your role in assuring that the district's strategic plan goals are used extensively to guide us to accomplish the district's mission? One of the things that I researched a lot was the data, uh, that the data and surveys are taken. And in the district that I would be serving, District 5, I would actually go visit the schools. I would see how things are going. I would build relationship with the principals of the school as well as the faculty, the staff, and the teachers. And then I would branch out and I would develop those relationships with the community of District 5, the parents, the stakeholders, the donors, because we, we need that. We, we truly need that. And as far as the mission goes, um, where all students and staff are empowered to dream, believe, and achieve, you've got to help create that dream for those children because sometimes they don't know how to create it. When they create it, then you've got to teach them how to believe it, how to believe in themselves. And I have a saying, let me believe in you until you can believe in yourself. And then how to give them the steps to achieve it. And that is what the strategic plan has in those four steps. I think I've memorized every, I felt like I was studying for a final in the last two weeks. So, I mean, I, I got my notebook here, so I appreciate you letting us use the notes, but the strategic plan is just awesome. I wish they had that when I was in high school. So, yes, I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you very much. Yes. Okay, and then we'll just go back to my question, and what was your question about the budget? Well, my question about the budget is school districts sometimes suffer from budget cuts. How do you, as a board, prioritize those different choices of what to cut? That is the million-dollar question, <laughs> which we hope we won't have to uh, re resolve. But I will. Uh, uh, at, yeah, and then I will also, <laughs> also, also say that that is a question you'll have to ask yourself because. Uh, and that's kind of what the essence of that question was, was mm -hmm. then how do you prioritize what would uh, in the budget would need to stay, which items do you think could be left? That's very difficult. It is. Because the, the students need it all. And how do you give it all when you don't have those resources? So I'm a great fundraiser. So <laughs> I mean, I'm 
going to go out there and raise money for the school district. I don't have a problem asking for money. All they can do is say no, and you just go next. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so it's like, I don't have a problem. Dr. Thompson, do you want to add anything to that budget process? If you would like me to, there is a huge process that we use for uh, budgets. So we start our budget process sometimes as early uh, as January, February of the following year. And we bring information to the board in chunks so that we can digest it. Because see, we have smart people that can look at that stuff all day and they're just fine. But as people <laughs> like me, uh, we have to have it in chunks. So what the board does is they look, they get, they digest all that information about the budgets. There are times when we would have to decrease the amount of money in our budgets. What the board direct usually does is they direct us back to me and say, Alicia, what I need you to do is go work with your people inside the system. So then we pull together a variety of people to come in and have an opportunity to say, let's look at the overall picture. Let's look at the things in our district that are working. Mm -hmm. Look at the things that, what can we live without? What can we not live without? What are essential things? Then we bring back recommendations to the board the board then says, yes, we like that. No, we don't like that. Go back. So what we do is they use us as a, as a resource to kind of banter, as it were, somebody just used earlier, back and forth about what's, it's really not a banter, it's really about having the opportunity to explore what is, what is the most important and what do we value. And what we usually do is look at that strategic plan. The strategic plan drives it all. So if there's something on there that's not linked into that strategic plan and really impactful to those end result goals, then those are things that the board will ask us to go back and look at and bring back to them. And then they really then can see what really is reasonable to use as cut items. That's kind of how that works. Thank you. That and thank you, Mrs. Kathleen yes. Bond. We appreciate you taking the time to come speak to us tonight. And you now have a minute to uh, tell us uh, in a closing statement uh, whatever you would like to say or on why you. we should pick you. President Reeser, Vice President Blankley, board members, Superintendent Thompson, it has been a privilege to be before you this evening. Thank you. I hope my answers along with my application and letters of reference have satisfied the essential qualities needed to fill this important position. It is my desire to be a part of the educational process of our children while preparing all students for successful living. Considering COVID-19, our community continues to face many challenges, especially with our students and educators. It is my wish to be appointed to this vacancy and join the ongoing efforts of overcoming these challenges while striving to offer our students the most effective educational experience, granting them a readiness for their future. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next applicant is Timothy Ferris. Welcome. Thank you. And um, it's my turn to start off the questions, and you have two minutes to answer. And uh, uh, my area of question is in the area of the budget. And as you know, uh, one of our primary uh, responsibilities is to set the budget. And how would you work with all st stakeholders to determine our budget priorities? I think I would respond with what I am familiar with. In the past, um, the board would, and, and Superintendent Thompson would work with the community on uh, planning of budgeting. 
and budgeting priorities. And typically with budgeting priorities, it's a multi-step process. You first engage the uh, community and uh, listen to what the community uh, expectations are, particularly for that coming year, and what improvements that they believe is there. And also you have to listen to your own administrators to see what their needs are. And usually in, in, in this district, we've had multiple community uh, meetings on the budget and the uh, public, where's the clock? <laughs> the public is given an opportunity to uh, comment on that budget. I think at the same time, uh, as with, with board, um, you have to have um, good listening to what's going on in Topeka because the conditions there are uh, changing. Uh, and in my experience with, with 259, it uh, may change on a daily basis on, on what uh, the uh, per pupil funding will be or what the formula. And in, in the years that I've been with 259, um, the formula could change drastically even within a, a few days. And so you've got to have your ears to the ground to know what the, the funding formula uh, will be. So to, to answer your question and kind of uh, put a summary on it, um, the, the budget department for 259 does a very good job of forecasting. They always have. Um, and, and number two, listen to what the public wants and the expectations of the public. And then uh, three, uh, listen to your administrators on what their, and teachers what their needs are. Uh, the big item, of course, is what um, the, your faculty costs will be. And then do the community engagement process as we've had in the past. Thank you. Ben? My name is Ben Blankley. I'm District 1 representative, and my category is diversity. Uh, what local initiatives or activities have you been involved in for diversity, equity, and inclusion? Explain your personal involvement. Well, I used to, at the School Service Center, uh, a number of us were called on to do uh, cultural, what they called in those days, cultural proficiency, and then later diversity training. Um, and, and so I would, I would point to the experience of being a, a, a leader advocate for that at the school service center and within the district. I also had to train long time ago substitutes in diversity. And uh, it, it was very similar to what we have today, but, but, not, but not the same. I might point, uh, and I did not put this in the application, but when I was at East High, I was uh, the coordinator for Mid-America Consortium for Engineering and Science Achievement. And it's, it's a long, long title. But what I essentially did is worked with young people at East High and um, particularly people underrepresented in, in sciences and engineering and work with them to get up to speed um, on uh, college applications. So I would literally um, take students up to K-State and KU and have them visit the campus and answer their questions. A lot of them had worries about funding or whether they could do the coursework. And so um, I was their advocate on those campuses. Um, and, and it was a voluntary uh, position there at that time, so. Thank you. I'm Ernestine Crable and I'm from District 3. And my question has to do about getting along with uh, this cranky board. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to say that. How would you get a, go about establishing and maintaining good relations with the board, but with specific members of the board? And what examples do you have of where you have worked in such a thing as a board or a volunteer organization such as that? Okay, I, I think there's like two questions maybe Mm -hmm. in there. Um, I, I'm a pretty social person, so I, uh, I believe that school boards uh, should function in, a, in, a, in, in the best of worlds in a seamless way. Um, we can agree to disagree, and uh, we respect each other when it comes to board relations. Um, 
having uh, been to school board meetings for 25 years, I've seen where there has been, you know, contentious uh, meetings. So um, with, with that, um, as far as um, working with others, I, I was uh, within the, the school district, one of many administrators of a central office team that worked on many things. And probably one of the most challenging things, and, and Ms. Hedrick knows this well, was the administration of the, the bond, the, the two bonds. And so I was part of that, which involved a lot of interaction between uh, stakeholders, people that needed to have buy-in. So you'd have the building principal, you'd have the community, you would have contractors, you would have architects. And so quite frankly, in, in my career with 259, I can't honestly think of a time where I had to work with so many entities uh, and, and get people together with some degree of, of consensus. So I would point to my, my, one of my bond obligations and, and, uh, it, and Julie will, will understand, excuse me, Ms. Hedrick will understand that that, that is quite challenging. And speaking of Julie, she's next. Okay. Good evening, Tim. Glad Good to have you here. Good evening, Ms. Hedrick. Um, one, oh, I'm Julie Hedrick uh, with District 2. And one of the most important roles of the BOE is to evaluate the district superintendent. What do you look for in a great superintendent? I think you got one. And I, 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 I um, Ms. Thompson's not here. Um, to be honest with you, uh, in my years with 259 for 36 years, and I have seen many uh, superintendents. The superintendents that I have observed that are, have really good qualities are those that have consistent leadership, that they are excellent communicators, and they work with their school board, and there is a dialogue between the Board of Education and that superintendent. And it is a colleagueship, I don't even know if that word even exists, but you know, that they're colleagues. And really the, the superintendent is, is really there with the board on practically everything. So I guess what I would say, Ms. Hedrick, is that the superintendent and the board, and I, I mentioned this earlier, needs to be, in the best of worlds, a seamless relationship. And that you've got to have excellent communication. For example, in the great superintendents that we've had, they have communicated consistently with the board, and the board has shared their vision of what outcomes they want, and the superintendent listens. The superintendent listens and then he or she works to the best of their ability to carry out that mission. So I, th I think to, to come back, good communication, consistent leadership, and act in the best way with the board to carry out their directives. Thank you, and I would agree 100% with you that we've got a great one. <laughs> she's a keeper. Well, there she is, up there. <laughs> she's hiding up in she's, the audience. She's behind me here, okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm Cheryl Logan, the at-large position, and I'm going to address the strategic plan and the mission statement. Mm -hmm. um, how do you envision your role in assisting, in assuring, beg your pardon, that the district's strategic plan goals are used extensively to guide us to accomplish the district's mission? Well, I think the number one thing is to understand what you have printed, and I have gone through as best to my ability to understand what outcomes you are looking for. So I think uh, job one is understanding all of that and then to kind of drill down to think about how is that going to actually work? How is that going to play out? Um, in the role of board uh, member, and, and you all have, and I, I have to admit, I was really impressed with the, the initiatives that um, have been sponsored by this board. Um, I think you really have to be an excellent listener to the public. And if, if, 
it is the mission of 259 to look at future ready uh, initiatives. I think you have to be a good listener and then calibrate that against what outcomes that you want uh, to occur in this district and see if there is compliance. It, uh, compliance is not the word. Good agreement with, with what is expected to occur. I think a good and prudent board member when he or she hears that maybe we're kind of starting to go off into the weeds and you know we're not quite where we need to be i think we need to um i think we need to voice that maybe we need to recalibrate and look at what we need to get accomplished uh so definitely good listening and make sure that we're on target and and i know because um Ms. Thompson and her predecessor, uh, excuse me, Dr. Thompson and her predecessor would uh, often give uh, state of the district um, uh, discussions so we know exactly where we are. And so if, if anything, this district has always been very good about giving uh, progress reports. Thank you. Okay, Ron. Hello, Timothy, how are you? All right, good evening. Good, good. Uh, my question, I'm Ron Rosales from 6th District, and my question is community relations. I'm sorry, say again. My question is community relations. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, would you uh, please provide an example of how you have impacted community relations through your past or present employer and how that experience would be relevant to the school district and your potential role as a BOE member? May I ask a clarification question? Sure. So, so what things have I done to um, improve uh, community relations? Correct. Examples. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, for many years, I was a member of Homeowners Association on the west side, and I, at this point, I don't want to say which one. Mm -hmm. And so um, there were many, many challenges in um, uh, the Homeowners Association that I worked in, that I worked in as a... I, I held all the offices within this home, large homeowners association. And so uh, one of the things that I did is, uh, and it's very similar to what Wichita police do, is bring everybody together for a meal and work with people on some of those difficult issues that maybe they disagree with on. But I have found that if you have frequent meetings you engage the community, and I again point to the Wichita Police Department, I think does an excellent job with that, and engage them in those discussions, then some of those difficult details, some of those things that give people heartburn, they tend to get worked out as you, as you sit and eat a hot dog and, and have a Pepsi, uh, sit down and kind of uh, cuss and discuss and try to uh, find some common ground. So one of the things I like to do is bring people together, typically have food and drink, not that we can do that in 259, but, you know, bring people together and have those discussions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to uh, apply, uh, and we'd like to give you a minute to either make a closing statement or ask us a question or some kind of a combo. Well, I want to very much appreciate uh, th this group, uh, you know, this board bringing me here and allowing me to, to visit with you about my candidacy. Um, I have lived within my board area for almost 40 years, so I know my constituents very well. I worked in 259 for 36 years. I've worked in at Butler for 26 years. And um, I, I have had about every role in the district that you could have, teacher, classified supervisor, administrator, central office. And I have attended 25 years of board meetings. <laughs> I'm wondering why I'm here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna avoid that joke, but. I'm glad you said it. <laughs> no, I, I, I've, I've been here for 20, uh, two board, mem board meetings for 25 years, and so I've seen how it has changed over the years, and I've used up my time. 
Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Ferris, uh, we will make a vote on Monday night, and we invite you to come to that meeting for the uh, for that decision. Thank you, and thank you all for guiding me through this process. Thank you. Thank you. I was, yeah, I was going to, okay. Uh, we will take, we will take one more uh, interview process here uh, with uh, our next applicant, and then we will take a five minute break after that one for the last four, uh, if that's okay, if that's the board's will. Yes, that's Cheryl's got a question. No, Cheryl, that was what I okay. was going to ask. Our next applicant is Danielle Ramirez. Welcome. And thank you. And we are going to get straight into questions. And uh, it is Ben's turn to uh, have the first question. Good evening, Danielle. My name is Ben Blankley. I'm the District 1 representative. And my topic is diversity. What local initiatives or activities have you been involved in for diversity, equity, and inclusion? Explain your personal involvement. Sure, okay, can you guys hear me okay? Uh, tip that, yeah, there you go. There we go. Wonderful, so I'm so excited about this question. Um, I work for Partners for Wichita and Safe Streets Wichita. Um, and one of the things that we have been doing is trying to move away from cultural competency and towards cultural humility. Um, and so what that really means to, to us is that we are doing the hard work of examining our internal bias um, while also taking it even a step further to ensure that uh, we're backing it up with some action. So we, we notice um, inequities and we know that inequities exist. Um, not just in education, but in healthcare and other areas as well. And I've been really pleased to see uh, the district's initiatives and in ensuring that, um, you know, because USD 259 is such a diverse place, that there are measures in place so that all students feel welcome um, despite, uh, you know, their ethnicity or LGBT status. Or um, I know we have, gosh, uh, over a hundred different languages spoken here um, and what was it maybe 7,000 uh, special ed students and 7,000 ESOL learners so for me personally diversity um, is one of USD 259 strongest suits and it's one of the big reasons I uh, chose to send my own daughters there um, over over private schools and I, and I love private schools but um, that diversity piece you just can't get everywhere thank you Ernestine. I'm Ernestine Crable from District 3. And I have a question that to ask you about board relations. How will you go about establishing and maintaining good relationships with the board as a whole and with your fellow board members? And do you have an example of when you've worked on a board or with a group to accomplish something as a joint group? Yeah, great question. Thank you, Ernestine. Um, I believe that a board is a lot like a team. Um, I went to West High School here and I played volleyball. And so um, there were, you know, tenants of teamwork that I feel lay over right into the board of directors, just like any kind of sports team. Things like communication, um, being able to delegate and, and help um, kind of lean on each other uh, for different tasks that are needed and really cooperation even when there are differences of opinion is super important. Um, I, I help run something called Safe Streets Coalition which is all about collaboration and I have just been blessed to work with um, so many great leaders and people who know how to work together as a team to tackle issues that maybe not everybody agrees about. Um, and for example, uh, 
I work with somebody named Jan Chandler, and she has been uh, such a strong mentor in my life to show me that we get so much more done and accomplished uh, when we can work together. And something that just has really pleased me when watching some of the former BOE meetings is that, I mean, we've been in a pandemic, we've had so many challenges, and yet I've heard laughter from the superintendent and you all, and it just kind of lifted my spirits because it reminds me that, you know, we are all human um, and just doing the best we can. Julie? Hello, Danielle. Good to have you here tonight. Um, I'm Julie Hedrick from District 2, and my question is regarding superintendent relations. And in that regard, one of the most important roles of the Board of Education is to evaluate our district's superintendent. What do you look for in a great superintendent? Well, I think a great superintendent is a strong leader who cares about students first and foremost, but also um, the staff that she's overseeing. Uh, I know the district has, goodness, over 5,000 employees, um, and that's no small task. So um, being able to um, look at what's in the best interest of students and staff and support workers, you know, the people who are serving lunches, um, all the way down to the paras and everybody else um, is, a, is a really, really huge task. And I, I think, Julie, your question uh, makes a lot of sense because in the nonprofit world, uh, uh, which, which I work in and have worked in for about 15 years um, as staff, we, uh, we kind of, we gain our leadership uh, from the board of directors and we still have an executive director. So understanding um, kind of the, the roles that people play is, is really important. And, it's my understanding that the board of director or the board of education here, the purpose is really um, to, to set the sites for the district, um, to approve and update policy, to set budget. I'm sorry, is that time? No, okay. I, I thought I heard a dinging. Um, and, you know, Superintendent uh, Alicia Thompson, she really is in charge of the day to day, being the implementer, uh, so to speak of what happens in the district, her and the, of course, the other district leadership. Thank you, Danielle. Yeah. Cheryl. Hi, I'm Cheryl Logan. I'm the at-large representative. Thank you for coming tonight. Thanks for having me. Uh, how do you envision your role in assuring that the district's strategic plan goals are used extensively to guide us to accomplish the district's mission? Sure, um, I would love to bring my uh, values, my passion, um, and my skills to the table. Um, and I know that the four areas in the district plan are um, ambitious, but I do believe they are achievable. And I've been very pleased to read, um, you know, increasing the graduation rate, um, reading proficiency, college credit, and safety um, is so important. Um, and I really feel like my perspective um, as a community advocate, as a parent, as a former student, could really um, enhance that plan. One thing I was really thinking about on the drive over here was that um, we, whoever the next BOE member is, and, and this whole board is gonna have a huge job in front of them, and that's to assess where our students are coming back into the classroom. Um, we know that some students thrived in the remote learning environment, and some students really struggled. Um, even before the pandemic, we know that families are dealing with, um, you know, their substance use, mental health, um, food insecurity, um, poverty. There's these things that are happening in our students' life, and so we can't overlook that. Um, social emotional learning is so important. I've been so pleased to see that the district has programs like Second Step that help uh, get students to a place where they can truly achieve um, and, and get to that place and, and you know, their academic goals and, and our goals for them. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ron? Uh, Ron Rosales, District 6. Um, my question would be over community relations. Would you please provide an example of how you have impacted community relations through your past or present employer and how that experience would be relevant to your 
school district to the school district and your potential role on the VOE? Sure. Um, I love this question as well. Um, I'll give you two examples, one of how com community relations has impacted my life, and that was as a USD 259 student at West High School. Um, I, at that time, struggled with mental health and substance use issues myself, and there was a nonprofit group who came to West High, um, and I got involved with their leadership team. So they, by extending their resources, w was able to work with me one-on-one -on -one and within a group setting so that I could become um, a leader and believe in myself, right? So I truly believe that community relations saved my life because I wouldn't be in this spot where I am today if there hadn't been a group partnering with the schools. Um, so now I work with nonprofit organization uh, partners for Wichita. I mentioned that, and it's all about community. And when I'm working with different sectors of the community, I, I've been absolutely blessed to work with law enforcement, media, schools, um, you know, congregations, all of these different entities in the community to bring them together to help meet the needs. And what I'm seeing is that people are hungry to partner with schools and students if there's an avenue for them to do that. Um, and I, just in watching some of these videos, I was really impressed not just by the sheer number of partnerships uh, that USD 259 has with community organizations, but the quality of them as well. So thank you guys. All right, thank you. Thank you. I'm Stan Reeser. I represent District 4. And my question is in the area of budget. As you know, that's one of our biggest responsibilities is to set the budget for this uh, uh, district. How would you work with all stakeholders to determine what our budget priorities are? Uh, that's a great question, Stan. Um, I think you said it. Uh, the, the key word here is priorities. Um, I'm pro public education and pro figuring out how to keep public dollars in public schools. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know the intricacies of the USD 259 budget, because I do not. However, um, I am eager to learn and grow and uh, find out uh, how I can communicate with the stakeholders and to learn about what the priorities are um, here in the district. I, I know that $108.9 million uh, is a lot of money. Um, and on a smaller scale through my work, I have been successful at, well, really our coalition's work enabled me to do some grant writing. And so I've had some opportunity um, to oversee a budget um, up to a million dollars, not, not much more than that, but I, I think it boils down to priorities and how do we prioritize our students and our staff doing the hard work with them. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, we would like to thank you for taking this time to apply and we would l love to give you a minute to um, make a closing statement or ask us a question uh, or some kind of a combo. Sure, I would just say that I very much appreciate the opportunity, um, whatever happens moving forward, uh, just to learn more about the schools and to meet the lovely people um, that I have in the last few weeks. And I do believe that as a former student, a current parent, and a community advocate, that I could enhance um, the relations here on the board and in our schools in general. Um, I do have one question, and that is um, if you could describe the decision-making process moving forward for the next candidate. Uh, we will make a decision on Monday night. You're invited to that meeting. Uh, we will t uh, take ballots and the exact procedure of how that will be announced uh, Monday night, but it'll basically until the, we'll go ballot to ballot until somebody gets four votes. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. And just a general announcement, um, we're gonna take a five minute break. We wanna make sure that um, we've interviewed five so far, but we do, we wanna make sure the last four um, and I hesitate to even use the word last, but the last four are, are great, uh, much attention as we gave the top first five. So if, with that, we'll take a five minute break and then we'll proceed with uh, our next applicant. The board's ready, we'll get restarted. Our next applicant is Mr. Samuel McConnell. 
And Mr. McConnell, we're gonna start straight with questions on various topics, and then at the very end, we'll give you a chance to make a closing statement. All right. And we're gonna start with Ernestine this time. Hi, I'm Ernestine Crable from District 3. And my question is about how you will propose to get along with other board members and the board, board as a whole. Have you had experience on working with groups to accomplish a common goal? Absolutely, I work with a team of 12 people um, at my day job, I'm a, I'm a uh, IT technician. Um, I work as uh, part of a team. We solve uh, big problems for Fortune 500 companies um, when they're having issues with their uh, computer storage systems. Uh, sometimes that's something that one person can know the answer, get it done, uh, but oftentimes it takes collaboration within the team and uh, that's something that I've uh, done a lot of in that job. Um, so what I've learned to do with that is to listen, to listen to the people that I'm working with um, and not just talk over them, but listen and to try to uh, you know, synthesize what everybody is saying together to find uh, the common solution between what everybody is saying. Julie? Hello, uh, good, good to have you tonight. Um, I'm Julie Hedrick with District 2, and my question is regarding superintendent relations. Yes. One of the most important roles of the Board of Education is to evaluate our district superintendent. What do you look for in a great superintendent? So with a superintendent, um, you, know, you wanna have one that is ready and willing to work with the board, but also to bring things to the board that the board might not be seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, since the board's you know, meeting periodically, uh, not meeting all the time with uh, the administrators at the individual school level uh, that will be reporting to the uh, superintendent directly, the, uh, the superintendent can uh, bring together all that information uh, to propose policies and uh, initiatives for the boards to uh, consider and address. Um, so, so I think the most important uh, part of the superintendent as far as working with the board is to make sure that they're getting all the information they need to make the decisions that they need to make. Thank you. All right, I'm Cheryl Logan. I'm the at-large person and I'm gonna be talking about our mission statement and the strategic plan. Yes. Okay. How do you envision your role in assuming that the district, uh, assessing the district's strategic plan goals and how they're used extensively to guide us to accomplish the district's mission? So with the long-term strategic plan, um, I have noticed and I've been impressed with uh, how it's already been executed. Um, so I think as a board member, uh, my role would really be to um, make sure that we stay on that track um, by speaking with administrators and superintendent um, and listening to uh, educators and students and families um, to make sure that we're meeting those goals uh, and kind of staying the course, uh, how they've been implemented already. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Ron? All right, how's it going? Samuel, right? Yes. Samuel? All right. Uh, my name's um, Ron Rosales. I'm with the 6th District, and the representative for the 6th District. All right. Uh, my question will be about community relations. Uh, would you please provide an example of how you have impacted community relations through your past or present employer and how that experience would be relevant to the school district and to your potential role as a BOE member. Yes, probably. Um,
Is there something you would like me to repeat? Um, yeah, if you could repeat the question. Okay. So provide an example of how you have impacted community relations through your past or present employer and how that experience would be relevant to the school district and your potential uh, role as a BOE member. Okay. My, uh, my current employer, NetApp, gives us a week of paid time off every year um, to do volunteer work in the community. Um, and that's something that I've uh, utilized heavily um, over the past eight years or so that I've worked there. Um, working um, primarily with uh, KMUW, uh, the public radio station here in town. Um, volunteering for them, I've been uh, helping them with their community commentary se series for the past, gosh, I guess it's been eight years now. Um, to help them with their outreach to the community as far as um, getting community members in to speak about things um, that may or may not involve the community but uh, directly but getting the community involved in the station okay all right thank you mm -hmm. my name is stan racer i'm on the uh, district four i represent district four and my question is in the area of budget and as you know, one of uh, our primary responsibilities is to set the budget for the district. And my question is, how would you work with all stakeholders in determining uh, budget priorities? Uh, well, first of all, I think I would uh, I would speak. I know we've the the board has uh, or the district has. Uh, managers for the budget. Um, you know, I would want to meet with them to see, um, you know, what priorities have been in the past and how we're spending that money. Um, and then go over items uh, a little bit more granularly um, just to see um, what, have, what has been priority in the past if that's working, if that's meeting the long-term strategy um, that we're working towards, um, and if so, support that, and if not, uh, try to speak with more stakeholders as to why you know, this item is getting this kind of support where this other item may not be. Thank you very much. Ben? Good evening, Sam. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ben Blankley. I'm the District 1 representative, and my uh, topic is diversity. Yes. What local initiatives or activities have you been involved in for diversity, equity, and inclusion? Explain your personal involvement. or even if you had a general statement about diversity. Sure, sure. Yeah, I would have to say that I haven't, um, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have any uh, specific uh, experience with any kind of uh, initiative like that directly. Um, but uh, I have uh, supported, like at KMUW, the Corvick Holman, mm -hmm. um, And maybe like at, at work, um, how, how would you, uh, like in your day-to-day -day interactions, uh, improve the, uh, the climate for inclusion of varying groups? Sure. We're, well, definitely um, at my job at NetApp, um, since I've been there for a while, I, I am uh, part of some of the interview process. Uh, and I do uh, try to make sure that we're... Um, interviewing uh, people from across the spectrum. Um, IT does have a very uh, heavy, uh, especially white male presence. Um, and uh, thankfully, uh, my employer is uh, supportive of 
diversity initiatives and making sure that we're hiring more women and hiring um, people of color um, and uh, I think we've been successful at that. Thank you. M Mr. McConnell, uh, we'll give you a minute to either ask us a question or you could make a closing statement. Sure. Um, I did want to ask um, what kind of uh, professional development do board members uh, tend to be involved in? And uh, that is the second person to ask that question, so that's a very common question, so that's very good. And I will give uh, Dr. Thompson a chance to come down and answer. Oh, great. But we will, uh, we do a lot of in-house training mm -hmm. with workshops and with, uh, we are a member of many organizations in cooperation with many organizations that provide training. And uh, if we do select you, I guarantee you, you won't be out on a limb. We will get you training. But Excellent. I will let Dr. Thompson, Thompson give you a better answer than that. Great. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. We, first of all, we, we do have just that, a board training specifically for the Board of Education members and even officers. So what we do is we have everyone from all of the divisions within the organization, department heads, they come together and they spend time working with you, sharing what the departments do, you know, just the big, because this is a big, big conglomerate of an organization. Sure. And to be able to kind of get a handle on that. Then we are part of national organizations, the Council of Great City Schools, the National Association of School Boards, and we have budgets at the board level where we send you to those places so that you can interact with other board members, understand the dynamics there. We do have workshops that we have here regularly within the district as well on a regular basis so that you know what's happening and that you can get development around that. We have state organizations, Kansas Association of School Boards. They have workshops like, seems like every week. <laughs> you can just pick from any topic, board relations, um, superintendent evaluations, all the way from how do you get involved in the community and all those kinds of things. They all are available to you from the Kansas Association of School Boards. You also have your colleagues that is the best professional development is job embedded professional development and interacting with people who have been on the board. You know, we've had some people who've been on the board for 12 years, 12 years <laughs> all the way to people who've been on the board maybe five years, four or five years. And so you have a wide variety of colleagues that will also be able to support you. So there's tons of opportunities that you can take advantage of. And of course, I'm I'm here to direct any of those places that you'd like to, to have that professional development and we'll get you there. Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. McConnell, we will be voting this coming Monday night. You're more than welcome to attend. And is, it is our intention to pick someone that night. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you again in the future. All right, great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Our next applicant is Kimberly Wilson. Uh, welcome. Thank you. And uh, we're going to get straight into the questions. And uh, Julie has the first one. Good evening, Kim. Hi. Thank you for applying and joining us tonight. Thank you. And my name is Julie Hedrick. I'm from District 2. My question is regarding superintendent relations. And one of the most important roles of the Board of Education is to evaluate the district superintendent. 
So I'd like to know what do you look for in a great superintendent? So I believe that the superintendent serves as the beacon and the leader of the entire district. I look for someone who is not afraid to set really audacious goals, which is one of the things I love about our strategic mission is that we are in relentless pursuit of some pretty audacious goals. I also appreciate a superintendent who can lead by example, who has classroom experience, who can build positive relationships with teachers, staff, and with children and with families. Um, and I also think that the superintendent needs to be knowledgeable of empirically supported practices and pedagogy so that that can occur and she or he can support that in the classroom as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm next. Hi. I'm Cheryl Logan and I'm the at-large position. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I have the mission statement and the strategic plan. How do you envision your role in assuring that the district's strategic plan goals are used extensively to guide us to accomplish the district's mission? Right, so as our mission is to prepare students to be college, career, and life ready through rigorous and innovative learning experiences, and I think the four strategic goals that are in the plan align very nicely with those, right? It's to increase graduation rate to 80%. It's to pr um, improve reading proficiency in third grade. It's to promote and increase the number of students who complete CTE pathways and, and certificate programs. And then it's to increase the perception of families, teachers, and children in terms of the safety of our schools. And I think that my position on the board would be to continue to do what I already do. Right, I am already in the schools working with children, working with teachers. I serve as a coach and a mentor, a volunteer and a tutor. Um, I build relationships and have relationships with several people in schools. And I think as a board member, it's important to, to make sure that you're judicious in the decisions that you make and that you are again relying on data, making data informed decisions that support and align the strategic plan so that we can graduate more students who are college, career and life ready. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ron. Hello, Kimberly. Hi. I'm Ron Rosales, representative for the 6th District. And uh, my question will be about community relations. Would you please provide an example of how you have impacted community relations through your past or present employer and how that experience would be relevant to the school district and your potential role as a BOV member? Absolutely, so I'm a professor in teacher prep at Wichita State. So um, I, we are all about the community. In fact, one of our guiding principles is collaboration, community, and applied learning for our students. And so weekly in that role, I am out in schools, working with teachers, working with student teachers. Um, and I think that benefits and gives me some very relevant and recent experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that through that, through that role, I also, um, with my husband, have co-founded a nonprofit that serves at-risk youth, and we provide mentoring services to boys of color in elementary schools. And so again, in that capacity, I'm out in schools weekly too, working with, with children and teachers and families to better meet the needs of some of our um, disproportionately identified young men. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Ms. Wilson. My name's Stan Reeser. I'm on District 4. Uh, my question is in the area of budget, mm -hmm. and my question, as you know, probably uh, one of our main goals is to set the budget for the district, and how would you work with all stakeholders to determine the priorities of the budget? Well, I think um, as the District 5 representative, it's my duty and responsibility to make sure that I'm the voice for the, the individuals in my district. Also, because I'm a teacher and I'm a parent of, a ch of children in Wichita Public Schools, I also bring that voice to the table as well. Um, and while I, I don't know all of the nuts and bolts of the, di of the district's budget, I am familiar with the Kansas School Finance Formula. Um, I was the department head of our college's Department of Teacher Prep and so have had very recent budget experience myself. Um, and so I think listening, right, being a good listener, being a good steward of the, of the district's finances, and then making sure that the decisions that we make are directly aligned with the strategic plan so that we can have the financial support and backing to actually accomplish those very audacious goals. Thank you. Ben? Good evening, Kim. Hi. Um, my, my name is Ben Blankley, and I'm the District 1 representative, and my category is diversity. What local initiatives or activities have you been involved in for diversity, equity, and inclusion? 
Explain your personal involvement. Absolutely. So I recently read an article that defined diversity as a pleasant mix of ideas, culture, languages, exceptionalities, and gender that help work together to promote learning and growth. And I thought, what a beautiful way to look at diversity, right? And I think that one of the things that I do best is I honor and celebrate diversity. I teach teachers culturally relevant pedagogy. Um, and then we work very closely with Mr. Polite and Mr. Reynolds' office in terms of providing um, mentoring services and academic support, as I mentioned, for boys of color and for, gr for girls who are identified by their teachers as being in need of mentoring services. Um, and then again, as my role as a professor at Wichita State, that's one of our guiding principles in the School of Education is diversity and honoring diversity um, in all of its glorious fashion. Um, my area of, of research is literacy, emergent literacy. And so um, when you talk about exceptionalities and learning disabilities, if you're following the dyslexia conversation at the state level, it's how to work with diverse levels of readers. Um, and so I have that experience. And then I'm also an early childhood unified educator. So working with young children who have exceptionalities and families in order to, to help them be able to better access school. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ernestine. Thank you, Kimberly, for applying and coming to meet with us this evening. I'm Ernestine Crable of District 3. And my question has to do with how you might get along with board members and the board as a whole. And could you give some examples of where you've worked with a board and been able to work in a unified uh, co cooperative manner? Absolutely. So I think if you asked my students, um, they would tell you that I'm kind, I'm approachable, I'm accessible, and I'm knowledgeable. Um, if you ask my colleagues, they would say I'm a lot of fun to spend time with, that I am a hard worker, um, and that I, I set a pretty high standard for myself in terms of the work that I produce. Because if I'm going to put my name on anything, I want it to be equality. Um, and so I think in order to be an effective board member, we are each representing different communities, different constituents, all working together towards the common goal, which is accomplishing our strategic plan, right, and supporting our leadership. And so in order to be an effective collaborator, you have to demonstrate mutual respect, trust, and you have to align your efforts towards that common goal. And I would say that, you know, I've been in higher ed since 2004. I've served on numerous boards for nonprofit agencies. Um, and I, I know for sure that one of the assets that I bring is my interpersonal skills and my ability to get along with lots of different kinds of people and to really kind of dig down into the work that needs to be done, but do it in a way that honors and celebrates all the people at the table. And you know there's no pay with this job. I right? do know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Miss mm -hmm. Wilson, we appreciate you taking the time to apply and going through this process. And we would like to give you a minute to either ask us a question or make a closing statement or some kind of a combo. Am I allowed to do both? A question? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I do have a question. In looking at our strategic plan, and I, will, I should probably let you know that I am very growth mindset oriented, right? I think regardless of how good of a job we're doing, we can always do better, especially when it comes to kids and families. So I know that our strategic plan asks and seeks to raise the graduation rate. Um, the State Department of Ed also releases what they call success data, which is data in terms of who goes on after, after graduation right. to some sort of post-secondary training or schooling. Um, we're at 40%. So I wanna know as a board, what have we thought about or how can we champion improving the success rate because we know that post-secondary education and training has significant outcomes for kids in terms of their financial and emotional social well-being so as a board i guess have we tackled that yet is it on the agenda to tackle i know it probably aligns very nicely with the graduation rate but um i guess that would be my question what can we do to f to further increase that rate that's a very good question and dr thompson i know we've spent many uh hours talking about the success rate but i would like you to go ahead and attempt to answer that in, in the way you think would be proper yep Absolutely, there's several things. One is we wanna, there, let me go back. The number number three, if you look at number three, when kids leave us that don't, there are a lot of kids that don't wanna go to college, mm -hmm. but they have to leave us with something that they can go and get a job and do something with. So we believe that increasing the amount of, of, of 
credentials that mm -hmm. kids leave us with is critical. That will be helpful to our effectiveness rate. When you then look at the other side of that, kids that leave us with more with credit, college credit hours prior to going to college, as you know, the success rate looks a little bit different for those students. So we are building an infrastructure as we speak. Well, we have some, but we're continuing to build each year infrastructure where we're able to increase the amount of students that leave us with a college or credit, um, college credits or either a credential. And we actually are bringing forth at some point soon a thing called something similar to Diploma Plus. Hmm. So when you graduate, you're gonna have plus something when you leave this school district. That will ensure that our effectiveness rate will increase. Awesome, thank you. Yep. Mrs. Wilson, we are planning on voting this coming Monday night and you are more than welcome to attend for that vote. Uh, and we will do our best to actually succeed in uh, actually filling the seat as, a, as opposed to uh, uh, kind of deadlock. I don't think, we're not anticipating that. We feel like we can come to a decision, but we really appreciate you taking the time to apply and we look forward to uh, this coming Monday night and you're more than welcome to join us. Okay, and thank she you. she said she wanted to perhaps. Oh yes, to, yes, yeah, go I, ahead. I won't take long, because no, I know. No, go you, right ahead. Yes, but I, I, I will say that um, somebody asked me, because you're right, it's an unpaid position, right? And I don't need another line on my Vita for service. <laughs> I, you know, like I don't need that. So I guess I wanted to explain really kind of my why. Okay. Um, and I know you have my application in front of you. So Wichita Public Schools is home to me, right? I am a product of Wichita Public Schools. My children attend Wichita Public Schools. I volunteer and serve in Wichita Public Schools. Um, so it really is home to me. And I see these children as my children, right? They are my community, my children. These teachers are my teachers. It is very personal to me. Um, and so I, I guess I feel it as a calling, right? I know it's not paid, um, but I, I am extremely invested and I will continue to do what I do and work with kids and teachers, whether I'm awarded the position or not, but I do appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Our next applicant is Seth Tiger, and we are going to jump right into the questions, and it is Cheryl uh, Logan's turn to start. Hi, Seth, thanks for coming tonight. Thank you. Um, I'm Cheryl Logan, I'm the at-large position, and I have a question on the mission statement and the strategic plan. So nothing like starting off on the deep end, right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how do you envision your role in assuring that the district's strategic plan goals are used extensively to guide us to accomplish the district's mission? Um, I believe that um, it is important for the students at third grade to have reading proficiency. And as a paraeducator in the elementary school, I can see um, you know, when my third graders get to that reading level, by fifth grade, they're really ready for not only reading, but math, because with the math, they have, um, you have the word problems. And if you can't read, then you can't really do those word problems. So I really am a strong advocate for pushing on that third grade reading proficiency. Good, thank you. Ron? How's it going? Seth, all right. Um, I'm Ron Rosales, 6th District Representative. I'm going to ask you a question about community relations. Would you please provide an example of how you have impacted community relations through your past or present employer and how that experience would be relevant to the school district and your potential role on the BOE? Yes, pleasure. 
Um, when I was 18 years old, I started tutoring at West High School, where I graduated from, and I really made a lot of connections with those students. I was an avid tutor, and when I did my master's, I started working at um, WSU teaching there, and I would see some of my avid students on campus, and it was just such a great experience to just be able to see those students and watch them go from freshman into um, college. And then now that I'm working in elementary, I see the whole you know opposite spectrum of everything. So I've seen, um, I do interpretations at conferences and I really get to meet the families and see them and I see their brothers and sisters and I've even had some um, students that are children of students that I tutored in high school. So it's just been really a great experience to meet all those people see their accomplishments and their changes. All right, great, thank you. I'm Stan Reeser, and my question is in the area of the budget. As you know, the Board of Education, one of our primary uh, responsibilities is to set the budget for the district. How would you work with all stakeholders to determine our budget priorities? I think, um, first, it's always important to listen to everything, you wanna gain all the facts and learn as much as you possibly can because budget, I mean, that's way over any one person's head or realm of capacity of thinking. So I think you just have to listen, learn as much as you can, and then act accordingly. Make the best decision based on the research, the data, and the experiences of the people that you've talked with. Thank you, Seth. Good evening, Seth. My name is Ben Blankley. I'm the District 1 representative, and my category is diversity. What local initiatives or activities have you been involved in for diversity, equity, and inclusion? Explain your personal involvement. Um, mainly, I, I've just been, the last four years, I've just been working at the school as the para, and I have done some of the community engagement parts where I go to interpret for families that um, don't speak English there. I interpret Spanish and um, with conferences as well. But other than just working my everyday job with the students one-on-one -on -one and building relationships with them and their families, I, I haven't done much volunteer work, I should say. It's okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ernestine Crable from District 3, and my question is about working with the board. Uh, how will you go about establishing and maintaining good relationships with the board and with your fellow board members? And can you give an example of a time when you've done group work with the board or other things toward a common goal? Okay. Um, I first and foremost respect is at the very top you have to respect and that includes like i've already mentioned listening eye contact and really learning about who you're working with what they believe in and always trying to find a common ground with the people that you work with um, i've never been on a board but i do work with the teams of teachers like if it's the the team they get together and um, or if it's like an IEP type situation and I get in there and I, I always listen and make my um, recommendations to them after I have heard everything that I can and, and know as much as I can about it. Julie? Hi, Seth. Thanks for coming tonight. Um, I'm Julie Hedrick from District 2. My question is regarding superintendent relations. One of the most important roles of the BOE is to evaluate the district superintendent. What do you look for in a great superintendent? Um, someone that's going to be a leader and stand up for and advocate for the students, but also for the staff and all the staff, not just the teachers, not just the principals, but even down to the paras and the bus drivers and the people that work in the lunchroom, because every single staff member that works in the schools plays a role in the development of the children. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 
we would like to provide you an opportunity to either ask us a question or make a closing statement or some type of combo on that. Okay, could I do both? Yes. Okay, so my question was, um, as a board member, what has been the most rewarding part of this experience for you? Well, I think uh, you said it. I, I wrote down that you're passionate. And so I think you'll find that that's one thing that the board members find is that um, this has been a real labor of love. And we are constantly thinking about our students and our teachers and our staff members. And you're right. I mean, it goes from uh, all levels of the staffing, not just educators, but uh, uh, like you said, the bus drivers, the janitors. I mean, we're all in this mm -hmm. together. So that's how I would answer it. If any other board member wants to answer that question, they sure can. Uh, Dan, I'll, I, I'd take that. I would say, yeah. you know, uh, it's been a very challenging year, un unsurprisingly, um, <laughs> uh, for, for every board member across the country. Um, but what has what has focused my, me um, is the fact that we we do make a difference. We make we make a very positive difference. Um, there were challenging decisions, and somebody had to make them, and yeah. we stood up to make them, um, and you know, dealt with the the political consequences yeah. therein. Um, so it, it it makes me proud that that we that we were able to take that heavy burden off of other people and, and carry it for them. Okay, thank you. Ben said it much better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any last minute thing you want to um, say? Yeah, I just wanted to um, let you guys know that I feel that I'm qualified for this because I, I come from Wichita Public Schools all the way through, even into um, college. I went to Wichita State, which is public, and I just the past, this is my ninth year working in the district, and I've just seen, I, I see the, I, I see the dream. I have the dream for these students, and I believe that every student, regardless of where they come from, what side of town they live on, who, who they are, who their parents are, if they even live with them or not, they have the potential to be successful in life. And that's why I'm here today, because I want to be a voice for all of, the, all of my students and all of my former students and all the students that I, I haven't met. Thank you. We appreciate your, we plan on voting Monday night. You're more welcome to attend. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, all sir. Right. Thank you. <laughs> He's like, we'll, we'll tell her to tune in so that she knows what skills you I, I have. I was telling Julie, I, I need to have you guys over at my house. <laughs> You've had good training, huh, Mike? Our next applicant is Donovan Carson, and um, we uh, have a set of questions, and we will just go into the questions and then at the, on various topics, and at the end, we're gonna give you a minute to either ask us a question or make a closing statement or some kind of a combo on that. And I, I may have lost track, but I think we start with Ron. All right, how's it going, Donovan? It's going great, how are you? Um, I'm good, good. Ron Marsalis with the uh, 6th District. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question about community relations. Would you please provide an example of how you have impacted community relations through your past or present employer and how that experience would be relevant to the school district and your potential role as a BOE, BOE member? Mm. So I have worked Entry-level work oftentimes deals directly with the community. 
Now this wasn't with USD 259 in their community. I was actually in high school in Valley Center. And uh, one interaction with a customer in particular kind of stands out to me. I, it was my first job out of high school and uh, I was quite thankful for it. Um, I hadn't had any opportunity to work beforehand. I mostly focused on my studies and extracurricular activities. But one day, while I'm just doing my job, as far as I can tell, uh, one of the customers pulls me aside and kind of says that I was the talk of the town. And they kind of go on about that a little bit, and they say that I, I've been doing a really good job. Small town, I don't know if you've been to Valley Center, there was one gas station at the time. Uh, off and on, there's a second one, but pretty much everybody during their morning commute would come through for coffee, snacks, or of course to get their gas. And I took it as a point of pride to be as, uh, put forth as much effort to save them from having to meet the difference. Very minor interactions. This isn't, this isn't uh, you know, life changing. Having a, getting in and out of the gas station and getting to work on time isn't exactly life changing. Right. So that's part of what struck me is this person like took time out of their day to pull me aside and talk about how they appreciated how good of a job that I did, how welcome I made people feel, um, that I engaged with my customers, I met their needs, and I allowed them to continue on their day with as little investment as on their end as possible. I gave as much as the interaction needed. Okay. Oh, sorry. That, no, it's okay. Thank over time. You, that, no, that's okay. Um, and I'm sorry, the clock is up in the corner. Yeah. yeah. I, my, I'm Stan Reeser. I represent the 4th District. And um, my question is in the area of the budget. Mm -hmm. As you know, uh, one of our primary responsibility is to set the budget for the district. And I, my question is, how would you work with all stakeholders to determine budget priorities? So that, I think, is a very good question because there are a lot of stakeholders. You have the everybody that works in the school district from the janitor all the way up to the superintendent has priorities and concerns with how that money gets spent. Uh, but it even goes beyond that because the public is, of course, the community is, of course, uh, very interested in how that budget gets spent. And all of them have different priorities. I think that the best way to see that the priorities, the most important, mm, not even most important, I think all these priorities need to have their opportunity to be heard. There are stakeholders, of course, that lobby for different uh, budgetary concerns over others. And I think that they do a, a good job and it's incumbent on them to do that lobbying. And I think that that's part of the role of the school board is to know who those stakeholders are and to take their position into consideration, not just for the area of their expertise, be it a school or a particular program, but to put that in context as the whole district. Um, and I think that it's something that would co require constant vigilance to make sure that you're doing a good job, that you're seeing out, seeking out these stakeholders and hearing them when they seek you out. And I think that that is just kind of the primary uh, effort, if you will, while being a school board member. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Ben? Good evening, Donovan. Um, Good evening. My name is Ben Blankley. I'm the District 1 representative, and my topic is diversity. What local initiatives or activities have you been involved in for diversity, equity, and inclusion? Explain your personal involvement. So I have one of the tricks, not tricks, but one of the challenges I think that our education system has is targeting underrepresented groups uh, in information technology sorts of fields. I think that there's a lot of natural barriers to get students from diverse backgrounds interested into 
uh, field like mine. So I graduated a computer science from the University of Kansas, and I've used that degree in my field ever since. So last year, uh, in the semester immediately preceding or during the start of the COVID pandemic, I was uh, mentoring one of the Wichita North students during their senior project. He wanted to create an application to uh, help people not familiar with a particular city find hospitals or emergency services. So there was considerations of GPS locations, finding a directory of the hospitals in the area and stuff like that. So I consulted with him as to the nature of his, uh, of the work that he was doing and what it might entail and what it might, uh, things to look out for. We talked about programming languages. I was able to meet with him, I think three times uh, before things started to, before the spring break. And um, that's when things started to shift dramatically uh, with regards to COVID. So I must regret to say that I wasn't there with him. I, I think three was the required times of meeting that the course had with me, um, but I wasn't able to find out how well he did. This is an opportunity I had to reach out to a student in our district to try and help them breach the, or bridge those gaps in getting interest and involved in information technology. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ernestine. Hi, I'm Ernestine Crable and I'm on, from District 3. And I have a question that is about board relations and how, would, how will you go about establishing and maintaining good relationships with the board, with your fellow members of the board and the board as a whole. And can you give an example of when you've worked in a, with a group of people for a common goal on a board or any other kind of group where you had a group of people that worked together for a common goal? All right. So probably some of the best uh, examples I have of working together on a common goal is going to be uh, academic, of course. In college, we, I had a number of projects where uh, the goal was to work together and achieve an output of some sort. My most, uh, probably the most uh, enlightening uh, example I have was a class called computer engineering or software engineering. And that's the process of designing, des deciding what you're going to do, designing it, and then working together, everybody pulling their weight to try and get it uh, achieved. And I think that that was a very good example because it taught me the most valuable lesson I've ever had in my, pers my professional career, and that is to use other people's time well. Whatever else you do, use other people's time well. If you're going to ask them a question, already have considered possible answers. Um, my, one of my first managers at my current job, uh, I've shifted teams around a few times, had a, a good kind of quote that I also like to throw out there is come to me with solutions, don't come to me with problems. And that's, you know, don't have everything figured out before you ask a question, but instead say, I have this question, I think this, this, or this could be possible answers, what do you think? And I think that those sorts of uh, interactions, using other people's time well, uh, that's just an example of how you might use other people's time well. Um, I would strive to understand the particulars of everybody's district, because I understand that sometimes we may come at odds at what, uh, about budget concerns. And by better understanding their districts and their district's needs, I think I could relate much better and much easier to them and have a more harmonious uh, cooperation. Thank you. Julie? Hi, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Julie Hedrick from District 2, and my question is regarding superintendent relations. One of the most important roles of the BOE is to evaluate the district superintendent. What do you look for in a great superintendent? So I think that the superintendent is one of those stakeholders that I was talking about when I imagined the, uh, how to handle budgetary concerns. And my internalization of the role of superintendent or what I would look for in a good superintendent is one who's 
kind of, uh, as, as an asset to the entire board as a potential builder of that bridge between board members, I think the superintendent probably has a better idea in general what's going on in the school district as a whole um, and can help put one district's needs in, in uh, context of the others. And I realize I use district in both ways that way <laughs> where I was talking about the six districts and then the USD 259. Um, so I think that an expert on the schools in USD 259 is really what I would hope for um, at least one of the qualities in a good superintendent. Um, I think honesty, because sometimes when you're trying to cooperate and collaborate with each other, you're going to have different priorities or your priorities are all the same, but they have different weights. And I think that a good superintendent is willing to tell someone when they're, when they're too firm, when they're, when they're putting their priorities above the, above the common welfare. They're putting the needs of their constituents either because they've got blinders on, because something else is going on in their personal life. Um, maybe it's a pet project that they're overly focused on, but I think a good superintendent will also be able to help rein in an individual board member in their overzealousness and their uh, perhaps lack of concern for other board members' priorities. Cheryl? Hi, I'm the last question tonight, so. And I'm gonna give you a question. I'm Cheryl Logan, I'm the at-large position. Mm -hmm. And I, my question is on the mission statement and the strategic plan. Um, how do you envision your role in assuring that the district's strategic plan goals are used extensively to guide us to accomplish the district's mission? So I think the strategic plan is a good plan. I think that it focuses on areas of education and community that are important for success for the students. My personal role will be to communicate to my constituency how individual actions of the board factors into that strategic plan. Um, I will also be interested in getting feedback from the constituency on the success of those, uh, of those plans because what I ex uh, expect to generally be communicating with in the community are going to be largely parents, concerned citizens, people who are invested in the outcomes of the schools. And they're gonna have a much more personalized perspective on how the things that we're trying to do, what sort of impact it's having and how it, whether or not it's even accomplishing those goals. That being said, I find it easy to believe that, uh, you know, increasing graduation rates, increasing reading rates, uh, proficiency is, are, are both going to be really successful at helping our uh, students dream, achieve, without adding a lot of overhead, uh, without adding a lot of, not fluff, but things that people m might take exception with. I think that it's very important to keep in mind that as a board member, we are representing people. And if we start to do things, what, perhaps to the benefit of students, we might have to consider that that might be viewed as inappropriate by some of our constituency. Okay, very good, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Donovan Carson. We appreciate you taking the time to apply and, and also uh, going through this process. And um, it is our expectation that we will vote on this this Monday night, uh, March 8th. Uh, and uh, you are more than welcome to attend that meeting if you would like to. But thank you again. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank he you. has a chance for comments. Oh, yes. <laughs> I apologize. And, and we do want to give you uh, a time to either ask us a question or make a closing statement. Or both? Okay. Well, I think I will go ahead and do a closing statement. Yes. So 
I understand that this is kind of an unusual situation. The position that I'm looking for is one that's typically elected. And I think that that comes with a certain uh, endowment by the constituency to just behave in the manner that you said you would during the election process. And while this isn't completely devoid of that, you are all elected members choosing this position or the applicant to fill this position, I think that it does take special consideration that we're going to have to look, uh, try extra hard to make sure that we are meet, uh, whoever fills this position is meeting the will of the people. I also think that I'm a good candidate to do that because my motivation for seeking this position is one of great humility and gratitude. Um, as I mentioned in my application, I went to high school with free and reduced lunches. I spent some time on food stamps and I went to school on, with, in part with a Pell Grant. And I have a great sense of gratitude to this community and I want to be able to pay that forward. Thank you. I I apologize for not giving you a chance to uh, do that uh, closing statement <laughs> till I realize, because very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That, that concludes the interviews for the night. And um, as I mentioned earlier, it is the intention that this will be on the agenda for uh, March uh, 8th, Monday's meeting, and um, we'll give all the details of exactly the, how we we're going to be voting, but it's pretty straightforward. We'll vote, uh, and uh, after one ballot, there could be some people eliminated until we get to someone who has four votes. Uh, Mr. Mike, next item. Adjournment. Do I hear a motion? Ben Blankley, District 1. I move to adjourn. I second it. Ernestine Prable. Moved by Ben and seconded by Ernestine to adjourn this special meeting of March 3rd. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 6-0. We are adjourned.